Hi guys, this is Kirsten Johnson, and I'm here with Karen Thebus. <laughs> Thebus, but yeah. Thebus. Thebus. Um, we have a treat for you today. So welcome to the Elephant Herd. This is a group, a private group of people who, a global community, who are gathering together to radically heal from the trauma of untreated childhood sexual abuse, and then to come together, heal, and to thrive. And so this is the first interview in the interview series where we will be talking to a trained psychologist and coach who works with people who have such trauma uh, as childhood sexual abuse. So Karen, why don't you tell us a little bit about your background in this, in this work? Uh, yeah, like most things in life, for me, I, you know, I, I come upon things. Things are put in my path. Um, so I trust that. And this was put in my path when I was in a private practice uh, as a psychologist, and it just felt good. You know, I have experience in this area personally, and I, I know how to talk people through you know, the, the doubts, the concerns. And we, so I put together a group, or a group, group was put together with the, another um, clinician that I worked with, and the group was amazing. It was amazing to see these women really change, and, and they'll tell you the same thing. But uh, I left that practice. I'm now doing coaching on my own because I feel like my, you know, my drive, my, my need, the need, what I'm needed for is, um, it's more of a devel development, adaptive development, uh, in intuitive. I, I try to get people to trust what they think and what they know, mm. and n get away from more of the therapeutic, um, you know, structure, but integrate it into, you know, our lives. Yeah. And I, I don't do four wall therapy. I do. Hey, let's go somewhere where you really want to go. I like the zoo. You know, I love the beach. I mean, it's nice because I live close to the beach. Um, but we can do anything, go anywhere, and that's you know that's what I'm feeling pulled toward right now. And the community, the abuse, you know, the abuse community, so accepting. You know. Wonderful, wonderful. Um, yeah, I agree that coming back to trusting the self and that how important that was in my own recovery. That's beautiful. Um, so you guys, I am so glad for you, those of you who are joining us live or who are watching later. And as a reminder, forward this to any friends, share it with them. This is for everybody who wants to recover from the untreated effects of childhood sexual abuse. Any sexual abuse, really. Uh, and you guys wrote in some questions. I am so excited that we have a professional here to help answer your questions that you have and that you guys can heal together in this community. One of, uh, so Samantha, Samantha asks, Samantha K. I honestly have no idea if I suffered childhood sexual abuse or not and have very little memories of my childhood. Most of them seem to be blocked. I have many symptoms, though, and have reasons to question the possibility of it. Is there any way someone could find out if it happened to them? Any way to unblock the childhood trauma memories and find out what really happened? So Samantha, we are going to see about getting your question answered right now. <clears throat> Samantha, good question. and. Uh... My heart goes out to you. I, uh, I understand what it feels like to, to feel in the dark. But keep in mind too, our body, our brain, you know, our, our cellular level, it protects us for a reason. Um, typical of abuse, children, childhood, uh, with people who haven't had their, you know, haven't had that uh, first real feel of what was going on, it, is childhood blocked? I mean, you don't, you don't know nothing about your childhood. It's just an interesting phenomenon, but so, you know, I'm, I'm, val I'm validating you there. Um, and the good stuff too, right? Oh, everything, yeah. Because I have oh, a hard time everything. remembering a lot of my childhood, not just the, the not abusive Not just the abuse, stuff, but no, the... everything. It's yeah. just like, you, you, it's, it's just gone, you know? So, you know, so, and then we'll talk into the good and bad in a second too, but you know, I, my question was, do you, do you want to know? And I know that's a strange mm. question, but really think about what it is that you want to know. You know that there's something going on. Um, sometimes the, the memory of the trauma can be more dangerous than, than obviously the healing of the trauma. Trauma comes out in all kinds of ways, as I'm sure you know, and what we need to do is address that, not so much dredge up the past. And if it's really, really important to you, of course you can. Of course you can. Um, you find a therapist who can do that with you. Uh, or you find somebody, you know, a, a coach who you really trust, who can walk you through those things. You have to feel comfortable. Your body's not going to let go of that unless you feel comfortable. Wow. Whew. Um, how can one come... Uh, so now the next question is... From Sierra. So there's a bunch of questions, but the next question we'll look at is from Sierra. 
about how to come out about the, the childhood sexual abuse, how to open up about it for the first time, how to, I guess, break free of the, the uh, not only the denial, but the um, having the courage to come forward. How do you do that? Yeah, I, I, I read that question. I gave that a lot of thought. Interesting question because that is a struggle and it depends on your family it depends on the people you're talking to can you trust them or do you trust yourself with them actually um, what has been your experience is the abuse from them and what will be their reaction families that are run by this abuse tend to not want to bring it up or take uh, take responsibility for their behaviors you know so they're gonna fight you every step of the way if you know then it's true, it's yours. You just need to know. If you want them, you need them to know, maybe work with a therapist, you know, give me a call, whatever, and let's talk about why. You know, why is really important. What, what is it that you want to get? What's the goal? What's the ultimate goal? My, my uh, notes here. Uh, oh, I was thinking too. Do you need to, is it the abuser you need to respond to or is it really finding out what it was because that's important if that's what it is but we need to clear what are we trying to do what's the goal yeah Did that answer yeah I love that and uh, and I I would my experience is that is that when I did have the courage to finally come out I wasn't believed and that was actually I don't know how to compare trauma and say if that was more traumatic than the actual experiences but um, it was very traumatic to not be believed by a family member when I came out and spoke about it so I, I love what you said about um, consider who you're coming out to and, 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 and what you're wanting from them. Mm -hmm. um, and that if, if we know we know what happened, then it happened. We don't need to get validation from other people, right. especially in the dysfunctional family unit, if it was another family member or a close friend of the family. Um, I love that it's like, be mindful of who you come out to. Exactly, and if it is the abuser themselves, you know, chances are good they're not gonna really wanna talk about it unless they've had recovery of their own and that's a whole different story yeah yeah wonderful hey you guys that are on their line uh, live right now I'm so glad you're here and you're joining us live if you have any questions you want to ask us during this uh, interview go ahead and type them below and we'll try to get to them we have all the ones you guys wrote before that we're gonna try to get to but we're open to working with you and I love that this is just a community of people coming together to heal and thrive so please just jump in with any comments or questions we'd, we'd love to uh, hear from you as far as, um, let's see, okay, so Marie asks, I'm interested in what you think, Marie M, I'm interested in what you think are the best things to do, to start to do to, to begin the healing. Mm -hmm. I'm confused at where to start. So on a practical level, what can I do to begin my healing journey? Uh, yeah, um, I did more notes on that. I, was, I love these questions, you guys. They're so good and they, they, they all, I mean, my, my brain has just been going crazy trying to get all my information out, but you know again asking that question it's that uh, it's the miracle question is what we call it basically is what do you what do you want it to what do you want what are you looking for what's your goal um, you don't have to be you know in you know, strict with your goal but in general a therapist is always a good idea you get to interview therapists you get to decide who you tell this to and talk to about this one you, you got to be easy on yourself my philosophy what I like to do and part of you know my, my little you know, the name I, I like to use is the, the adaptive intu intuitiveness. You will learn to trust yourself. That, you're the only one who can truly trust yourself. I mean, you're it. You, you can try to trust other people, but it's not about them, it's about us. And if I trust my gut that something isn't or is, I go there. And you know, sometimes I, I pay for those ideas in all kinds of awkward ways, but that doesn't mean, <laughs> that doesn't mean they're not, you know, they're not the, the correct ways I need to go down it means I need to learn how to do that because in the end it doesn't matter it's all gonna be back to me so that to me is the biggest hurdle is all right let's work on self first before we dive into uh, you know all the other stuff and one time one day at a time as they say you know small chunks and and self-care <laughs> self-care you know ease, be easy on yourself it's it's really easy to not be easy on yourself but <laughs> easy yeah yeah I love that. Um, something that's just coming to my mind that I'll share out there for Marie or anybody else who's wondering a practical first step. I wrote my story out. I wrote with uh, extreme anger. I wrote down like a kind of like an FU letter to my, my first, uh, the first abuser that I'm sure of. There's another thing that happened when I was six. I'm pretty sure of, but I don't have direct memories. I have like somatic memories. Mm. Um, but the one when I was like 10, 11, 12, I wrote like a FU letter to him. 
uh, and then I burned it. And that helped because there was a lot of anger and rage that I had against that. So for me, um, that was something that I did that was helpful in the beginning. And, um, and I think absolutely finding someone that you could tell, someone that you could uh, by because for me, there was there, it's a shame, right? So the, the, the perpetrator gives us their shame. They put shame on us, you know, and then we take on their shame. And then we think that we're, I think, I thought that I was, and I think it's common for people who are abused. There's something wrong with me. I'm bad. Uh, I can't trust myself. They must be right. I must be wrong. And so there's this huge shame piece. And then what keeps shame alive is secrecy. So the way to start breaking through the shame is to talk about it, to let it be, let your story out. And that's why I've called this group The Elephant Herd. Let your elephant that's blocking your life, your life force from living fully, let it be heard, share it. So whether it's sharing it in a letter and then having the courage to share it with a friend, share it with me, you know, share it with Karen, yeah. share it with somebody, share it with somebody that you feel that you could, you could trust. Trust yourself to, to, to gauge like who you can tell and have that be part of your learning to trust yourself. And you know what, sometimes we're wrong. You know, sometimes we tell somebody and they can't actually handle yeah, our experience, and that's okay. Yeah, but you know, that doesn't make it wrong. You know, we don't know why we're driven to do what we do. You know, we have to kind of get back from the, the, the good and the bad, the right and the wrong, because there is no right or wrong, really. It's, you know, what are you compelled to do? We have to trust that instinct. And if, in fact, it's like something doesn't quite feel right, it doesn't mean it's not right. I don't know if that makes any sense. Yeah. Just back to trusting yourself. You know, you know you. You, you, can, you can protect yourself better than anybody else and nobody gets to take away any you know nobody gets to take your life away from you you know the identity that you have created up to this point and the identity you had as a child that stuff gets stolen and we want to re-engage with who we are you know and create our identity but back to what you were saying too about um, the letter yes letter um, I was thinking about <clears throat> sorry um, Kind of what I was saying too is like we don't trust ourselves. We're taught not to trust ourselves, from, usually from the abuser, but from society too. You know, society says get over it, forgive, blah blah. I, you know, I'm not a big person on forgiveness. I'm just not, and not that letting go of those feelings is not okay. It, I mean, or that it isn't appropriate, but especially when somebody hasn't asked for my forgiveness, if you will. If somebody comes to me and tells me and says, "Hey, I, I've done this. I want to make it right," or you know, I took this away from you. Yeah, okay, maybe we can talk. That's great. But we can't come at, we can't talk to each other or be at the same level if we're not at the same level. So letting them come to me. Forgiveness isn't about, at least for me, forgiveness isn't about me letting, you know, giving them absolution. You know, they can find that with their own power, their own energy, their own universe, their own God. I don't need to step in there. I have my God, and that's all I need. Yeah, I love that. Free your own heart. And dogs. I need dogs too. <laughs> and dogs. Lots of dogs. Yeah, lots of dogs. <laughs> Cool, great. Okay, so um, we have some more questions. Um, Anne Marie at says, I keep doing things to heal and it seems like it just keeps coming back. Maybe you can speak to that. I try to heal the wound, to not hate the person, to release the sensations from my body. And I do some healing techniques and I feel good. My attractions change and I don't have the hate. And then the sensations come back and I hate the person again. It seems that um, there's a helicopter. It seems like all things get a little better each time, but sometimes strong hatred arises or big fears around being victimized by men or boundaries come back. Uh, does it ever entirely go away? Is there always a bit of something that I have to keep healing? You know, it's, it depends on what healing means to you. And I think yes, but not because of, you know, the, the type of injury, you know, the type of trauma. I think we're always growing and, you know, cells, slough, you know, whatever it is after a couple of years, whole new person. But yeah, I mean, every time I learn something new, I add that, you know, into my arsenal. And, you know, of, of course I'm still going to be growing with new things. I'm going to look at something different today as I did, you know, three years ago, 20 years ago. It's not going to be the same so i can integrate that into what i have now healing is great i always want to heal i always want to try and do those things hating you know i, I really i had i loved this question i thought a lot about it wrote a lot of notes mm. uh, it's a good one feelings are okay you know i mean i don't you know people say oh don't hate my i'm not that i don't sell that to anybody you know it's okay to not like somebody you know just, it's okay <laughs> to be disgusted by somebody's behavior it's appropriate and <laughs> You know, if I say you're okay, then I'm 
saying it's okay to do that to other people. And mm. It doesn't mean I need you to save you. I don't have to jump in and save people. But, you know, I need to say that, no, I, I don't like you. And I don't like what you do. And if I'm brave enough, which is tough, because you, you have to go through a lot, a lot, a lot of recovery for this, I can be honest. Now, you know what? I'm going to take that back. You don't have to go through a lot, a lot, a lot of recovery. It's when you get to the place where you trust yourself, you can be honest about your story, even if that person doesn't like it, you can still be honest about your story because it's yours. And that way, you know, it's, they know it, you don't have me anymore. It's not there. But feel feelings. I mean, feel them, be with them, self care, trust yourself. Trust yourself. I love that. I love that. What I found too is that over my healing journey, um, the, the trauma or the, the after effects of it, like the, the shame has been, uh, most of it's been released. I don't know if, I don't know if we ever completely are free completely. The way that I look at it as an analogy, which I would love for you to speak to even, is that if it's untreated, so if we've been traumatized and we don't ever talk about it, which is very common with, with childhood sexual abuse, it's just not talked about in society. Um, and then we just, or even as adults, if we get sexually traumatized, mm -hmm. And if we don't ever look at it or address it or look at our hate and, and feel it and feel our feelings around it, it's like we have a pus-filled wound that is like festering under the surface and that comes out in all of our life. Mm -hmm. It blocks us from living fully. It blocks us from, from being comfortable in our relationships, from loving fully. Mm -hmm. And like Wayne Dyer says, if you squeeze a lemon, lemon, comes, lemon juice comes out. Yeah. If you squeeze an orange, orange juice comes out. So if I have hate in my heart, um, it, it, is gonna, it might block me from some other relationships. And I don't know... Um, like what you think of all that, but what I what I believe from my own grieving process, and there was a period where I went through rage, and then I went through um, crying, and this whole grieving all the traumas that I had never looked at when I actually went in and did the healing work, um, like a big chunk of it, right, because it's ongoing, but um, I feel like I no longer have a pus-filled wound hiding on top of my heart, blocking me from life. I feel like I have a, uh, a healed over scar, like a, the way that a scar actually is in our body where you could see it maybe, and maybe if you touch it, there might be a little bit of a sensation, but it's not, it's not, it's not what it, ready to erupt at any minute anymore. Like I'm not walking around with, um, with all this, this negativity like ready to throw out at people, mm -hmm. if that makes sense. Yeah, so it's absolutely. more like a healed wound versus a pus filled, it's kind of gross, but it is, I mean, the, but it is, it's, it's pus filled. It is. Yeah, yeah. So what are you, what are, what are your thoughts on that? You know, it's interesting, semantics, wording, and, uh, and narrative really are important to people. So whatever it is that works for you, how you say it, how you explain it, whatever, make sure that it's, you're comfortable with it. Don't use somebody else's because then it may not feel comfortable or use somebody else's if it feels comfortable. Sometimes, you know, there's, it's, it's done for us. Why should we reinvent the wheel? So, you know, paying attention to what works for you. Um, the thing that I, I always ask myself about pretty much everything is why? Why is my favorite question? It's like a four-year-old, you know, why, why? Why am I mad? Why am I angry? And obviously because of the trauma, but if we can identify the specificity of it, if in fact I want to hurt that person or you know, I don't want to feel hurt anymore and they're separate, that's, those are two different things altogether. So we need to know what's my goal here? What do I want to do? Why, you know, why do I not want to be angry and why am I and, and who am I angry at? And is it the result of that person? Are they still in my life? Is it the result of me and you know, things that I don't feel that I can get through, but you, you are, you're getting through them, you're doing it. You're doing it right now, so, you know, let's, <laughs> I want you to stretch yourself, but, um, I just totally lost my train of thought, but, uh, yeah, I mean, go back to, just go back to trusting yourself. If you feel like you need to feel those things, feel them. We're, we're taught by, usually by our abusers too, and a lot by society, you know, don't, your feelings are wrong. You know, that's what we're taught. Yeah. Um, yeah. So we're, it's that reabuse over and over again, re-traumatization, when we say, I can't feel what I feel. And that's not true. We can. Yeah. So I love that. And I love that um, I keep hearing from you that it comes back to trusting yourself. And that was a huge, that was, a, that was the radical shift for me was when I realized that I was always abandoning and rejecting myself and that that was attached to my trauma because that's what I was taught when I was abused as a kid was to not trust the feelings I had inside. I must be wrong. Something's wrong. Something's wrong with me. And so the radical acceptance, radical self-love was a huge thing for me where I'm going to trust myself no matter what and go with that. What does that feel like? What does a life like that look like? And yeah. um, if it feels wrong, it is wrong. 
Yeah. End of story. It doesn't mean you're wrong, but if something feels wrong to me, it is wrong for me. Not that mean does not mean that you're wrong. But this yeah. doesn't. This my gut is saying, eh, I don't yeah. know. Then I trust that and I move on. And Even if, if everybody else thinks yeah. you're crazy, you know, you you're off. you just go with it because everybody will have their opinions. Everybody. Um, and if you're not solid in yourself, you'll start. Sometimes you'll start to question yourself, you know. And that's re-traumatization as well. So getting clear, you know. What would you say is a good way for somebody who's watching right now who wants to learn how to trust themselves more or to grow in their self-trust? What would be a practical tool or way or something that they could do, add to their daily routine, weekly, monthly, or I don't, however they can implement it? Right. Like a logical thing or... Yeah. yeah. No, that makes perfect sense. Um, more of a tangible thing. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. Identifying where you are is a, is, a, is a huge start. Where am I in this process? What do I know? What, what do I not know? What do I want to know? Um, where do I want to go? You know, and how am I going to be able to integrate these new things into my life? I, I wish I could say, you know, you, you know, put A and B here and everything will be fine. But each person is different. You know? okay. Some people like yoga. Some people like meditation. Some people like running on the beach. You find what works for you. And you know, it, it can be, it's gonna be experimentation. I mean, I, you know, go to, the zoo, go to the zoo, go to the museum, see what you like, spend time by yourself, spend time with people, you know. Do volunteering, you know, and, and the, my, my favorite saying is, and I, I think other people say it, but if you want good self-esteem, well, you need to do esteemable things, mm. which means getting out and being of service. Now, it's not, you know, your whole life is about it, but it's, being available to others, which you're doing anyway, by doing this, by the way, uh, by healing yourself, somebody else is going to get healed mm. too. It's, it's an ongoing process. Isn't that wonderful? I love that. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> we, we cannot not, we cannot, here's how I'm going to say this, um, <laughs> affect other people. I think you affect people every day, every time you meet them. If you're happy or if you have a smile for them, even if you feel junky, yeah. that's going to change their day. I mean, go out and have fun with it. But you decide what it is for you. Um, trust yourself. I, you know, I always just totally. go back to be easy with yourself. Watch some TV if you want, you know? I, I would say eat, eat that ice cream if you want, but you know, I've been a little crazy with that lately. <laughs> like, oh, I need to eat this, but. Or exercise or whatever you need to do. I, I belong to yeah. a club that, you know, there's all kinds of fun things there for me to do. Swimming, hot tub, steam room, because I need that. I know that. And that's what I do, it's my happy place. Yeah. I love that. Um, so something that works for me that when you were saying all that, like what really works for me and what really worked for me in my, in my recovery um, has been meditating. Like I love meditating and getting, because for me, and I know everybody, he'll, he, every, we all have intuition, right? We're all, we all have a higher self or higher wisdom. We all have that, a voice inside, whether it's a voice or a feeling or a knowing or however we experience intuition. And for me in meditation, sometimes I will literally hear things or feel nudges or feel pulls in one direction. Mm. And then it'll make sense later, like why? Like, because I went and met somebody and it was important or, or whatever. And so I wanted to invite you guys. I have, um, uh, on YouTube, I have a bunch of meditations, but I have mm. a, a free training series as well at digitalanxietypill.com if you want to come check it out. There's three videos there that it's about overcoming anxiety and anxiety attacks and meditating. So if you want to go to digitalanxietypill.com and if you're feeling resonant with uh, what we're saying about meditating and getting in touch with trusting yourself in that mm -hmm. way, be my guest. I see that there's a comment here, so let me just read. Um, I would love to heal from a trauma, but I keep trying to understand why they did it to me. Yeah, that's a tough one. Um, and if that's the question, then and that's what you need to try to get to. It's, and that's a broad statement. Um, a th therapy is fabulous. If you if you can find a therapist that you trust, um, you, you go with them. Like I said, you can interview them. If you don't like the one you're with now, go with a different one. Or look around for something. You know, find a healer, find a coach. You know, myself or Kirsten. You know, we that's what we do. Um, part of what we do. But uh, I was don't ever, like I'm, don't overthink it. I'm looking at my notes here because I was scribbling earlier. Don't don't overthink it. Um, people. People do things basically for the same reason. There's no new material, you know. It's, 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 it's an illness, which I don't want to say because then it sounds like, oh, well, they're, you know, that's just sickness. But it's not. I mean, you know, we can all heal ourselves if we want. But, um, but it's illness, and it isn't about me. You know, it isn't about us. We didn't ask for it. We didn't encourage it. I mean, they do it because that's what they do. But. You know, investigation, experimentation, 
asking the questions if you can. It's, it's not, it usually is not personal. It's usually yeah. easy, easy, ease of access. You know, it's like, this is a person who's here and I can do this. A vulnerable person. Yeah, a vulnerable person, which is great. We want to be vulnerable to the world, don't we? I mean, you know, I don't want to be hard and, and push people away, but you know, sometimes it, it gets used in a negative way. And there's that, what comes to my mind too is uh, hurt people hurt people, that phrase. Yeah. And so whether it's sick or hurt or something, I mean, something must have happened in in someone's life or their brain is a little bit different in order to make them be a perpetrator of children. Yeah, it's not a natural. Something's off there. Yeah, it's not a natural behavior at all. So, obviously, right? One of my first, um, when I first got sober, actually it'll be, at the end of this month, it'll be eight years. Um, One of my first, like, spiritual mentors in, in my sobriety, she would always say, why is not a spiritual question? It's what now? Mm-hmm. So instead of why is this happening, and then also why, instead of why is this happening to me, why is this happening for me? Yeah. You know, which is also like an empowering way to look at it. Like if you believe in a higher power or God or the universe or spirit, instead of why is, why is this happening to me and why mm-hmm. is this happening for me? What's being provided for right me here? Yeah. Why, yeah. Why, yeah. And so, and I found tremendous, um, instead of digging down the why did this person do this, which I've gone down that rabbit hole, rabbit hill hole, hole. <laughs> I was like that doesn't sound Some right sort of rabbit thing. before it's it's what now what can I do now how can I how can I and, and in some senses even and even as like awful as as you know why we're all in this group in the first place right what binds us um is is what is it for what how can I mine this coal and turn it into a diamond how can I use this trauma and and this obstacle this not obstacle but this trauma and have it actually be my power how can mm-hmm. this my hurt, my wound be my strength. How can I gain strength from this? What is it? Who do I get to become as a result from healing from this? That's really that's really what I, how I look at it too. It's like and then I and then I uncover that it's actually my life purpose to help other people recover from this. So, in my own journey, it's like how can I how can I grow from this? So, whether it's in forgiveness or whether it's not in forgiveness, whether it's in learning how to be with rage and anger or or not or whatever it is that I'm guided to, the meditation, I'm growing and tr- I'm growing as a person and yeah. I believe that we're all souls here to evolve. Yeah. And so for the evolution of my soul, there is going to need to be um, adverse experiences, whether it's a sick man when I'm a little kid or whether it's uh, an earthquake and the ho- or the house catches on fire or whatever it is that that if I look at, if I use my perspective as um, how can I grow from this after I feel my feelings? Because it's not about denying our feelings. Right. Like, this stuff is pretty, Absolutely you know, yeah. fucked. <laughs> For lack of a better term. Yeah, I mean, I'm like, what not, other, what other term? Stuff. It's, not, it's not fair. It's, I, mean, I hate to say that, but it's not. It just at, isn't. At a certain point in time, like, I feel like I get to claim my life back, claim my power back, and grow and, and, and use it as my, as my fuel and my strength. And then that's the journey is like... Yes, exactly. How do you change the narrative to work for you? But, you know, and it's not to say that if you if that's a, que- a burning question for you, that you shouldn't ask this, that question. You know, it, the why for me in this one is why do I want to know? What will this resolve? Not that I'm trying to, you know, not talking yourself out of it, but I, I really want to know what's, what's hurt right now. I love that. You know, so because obviously, you know, I, I think it's one of those obvious things of, well, of course I you know, want to know why. But why do I want to know that? What good will that do me? And you'll either, you know, walk away from that or you won't. And you know what? Whatever you do, it's perfect. You get to do whatever you want to do now in your life. You know? I love that. Yeah. I love that. And I love that we have different different answers for you on the why thing. I love that. So yeah. you can see what resonates with you. That's what this is. It's a just, bunch of people coming together and rising the F up together. Yeah. Just you know? different words. I mean, we're just using different words. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I love it. Okay, so uh, Gwendolyn, while you're still there, I have some of your other questions that we're going to go ahead and see if we can get answered for you right now. I'm so glad. That for those of you who are live with us or watching this later, um, this is really, really cool. So even if you're watching this, if you're watching this live, you can, you can type in a question right now and we'll see if we can get to it. If you're watching it later, you can also comment a question and we can see if we can uh, be in the, in the group and answer them um, offline later. So some more questions. Um, uh, Sorry if I'm saying their name wrong. Gwendolyn Jewell wants to know how to let lessen shame, to not listen to negative self-talk, and accepting where you're at. Mm. Well, that's yeah, that's the magical question. Oops, sorry, that's a magical question, isn't it? Um, they're not easy things to do. I wish I wish I could say, well, you just you know wave the magic wand. But again, it's practice. It's experience, <clears throat> experimentation. What do I like? What do I enjoy? Where can I take myself? easy on self and they, they seem like kind of pat answers you know what I mean like well 
<laughs> that doesn't help me at all, but it does if you can follow through. I can't, I can't take a pill that's gonna make me feel better. I can't take, you know, I can't get a boyfriend that's gonna make me feel better. I can't get a new car that's gonna make me feel better. And, and I can't move to a different state that's gonna make me feel better because you know what? I'll always be there no matter what it is. And so therein lies the problem. Trust yourself. Mm -hmm. I, I mean, I always have to go back to that. Intuition is really, really important. If I can't trust myself, then I can't trust anybody else. I mean, you know, I, I don't have trust issues with other people. I have trust issues with myself, you know, because they're going to be them. I need to know, you know, is this appropriate? Is it not appropriate? Therapy, obviously, if, uh, you know, if that works for you or anything else, whatever you find as your path to heal, that's what you got to do. Did I answer the question okay? Yeah, yeah, that, that's amazing. Let's see, so not listening to the negative self-talk. Oh, yeah. I think one thing for me that has helped with that, because uh, you're the expert, I'm just a person with a lot of experience <laughs> with trauma and trying to recover from it. We're, we're, we're all the expert. I'm, a, I'm an expert in my own story. Yeah, we're all the expert because, you know, we live through it. That's, it makes you an expert. <laughs> um, so not listening to negative self-talk. So a book that I found really helpful, um, maybe I came across it like five or six years ago, is You Can Heal Your Life by Louise Hay. Mm. And I didn't understand how profound the simple phrases in it was, were, are, um, but the affirmation, I love and accept myself. And she recommends saying them like half a million times a day, all throughout the day, wherever you're walking, you just say, I love and accept myself. And I thought that seemed kind of, I had a judgment on that when I first read it. And then when I, then I went into like a long healing phase and I came out the other end being like, that's genius. The saying I love and accept myself and it might bring up negative feelings at first. And I feel like that's just what's blocking our heart. And then, um, so continue having affirmations around your house of how like training you, we, somebody else programmed a lot of our beliefs, <laughs> society, parents, mm -hmm. culture, friends, family, and uh, m most of them well-meaning people, but to start take, uh, take responsibility for your own beliefs and for your own self-talk is to program it, to actively program it, and affirmations, um, I used to think they were pretty weak, or I, had, you know, I wasn't sure about that, if they actually worked, but um, man, it's so powerful. Like maybe even right now or after this video, go look in the mirror for one minute, look at your eyes in the mirror and say, I love you and see what happens. That's that really is a hard. radical transformation. Oh my gosh, that's amazing when you and, can do that. And some people, some people that's too much, you know, and that's too much and maybe just saying it without looking in the mirror is a place to start. Look in the mirror, you know, do it. It's it, trying to tell yourself you love yourself. That's the hardest thing I think I've ever done. I cried for a week. My, my, my uh, spiritual buddy said, do it, do it every day until mm -hmm. you like to do it. And I, the first week I cried, I, and, I was, and then it tripped me out, like, why am I crying? This is like seven, eight years ago. Um, and you know what, I can, I can honestly tell you right now, this is a woman who loves herself. This is a woman who has worked hard to love herself. And it's possible to, to go through these things, and even if they seem hard at the time, like, you can back down. You get to you you control the intense, intensity with how you engage with your healing. Right. You don't have to go full force. In fact, I wouldn't dive straight into the deep end. If it Stick feels your toe overwhelming, in. back yeah. up. But you know what? Like what, what, Building on what you said about looking in the mirror, if you have a friend, a family member that you trust, that you, you do feel love from them, have them look in your eyes and tell you they love you. Ooh. <laughs> you know? That, that feels good. It feels good and it releases a lot of things within us, I think, you know? Yeah. Able to hear it. We're not, I'm not able to hear it. That's why those negative thoughts are going on in my head. It's because I'm not able to hear it. But, you know, what's the narrative? What am I trying to sell myself? That With the negative self-talk, it's, you know, what am I blocking myself from? Books are great, you know? I've done everything from Brene Brown to, you know, I'm trying to think of a good one, uh, Mary Lou Henner, you know, she had like a whole thing on, and it was awesome. She had a whole thing on, I don't know, living life and how she did it, and it was great. Uh, Roadless Traveled. I always liked that as a, as a beginning book in self-realization, you know, my, not necessarily specifically to abuse, but um, for people who are trying to, you know, actualize, we start there. But Brene Brown is amazing. If you can get any of her books, uh, certainly do. She talks a lot about shame. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know what also, uh, you say that I love Brene Brown's work as well, and something that also helped me, this was later in my recovery from alcoholism, was when I was more around five years sober. At first it was the anxiety attacks I needed to look at before I could even get down to the shame. But um, John Bradshaw and his book, The Healing the Shame That Binds You, there's a lot of, uh, there's a lot of 
uh, YouTube videos from maybe 20 years ago. I mean, they're, they're, they've been posted more currently, but from lectures that he did on PBS maybe 20, 30 years ago, yeah. he talks in great detail about shame, and that was really helpful for me to break out of help the family trance and the family dysfunction and to help see um, see that I was in a sick environment, you know? And uh, so I would throw a little shout out to yeah. um, John Bradshaw worked for me and, and Brene yeah. Brown and, and what you recommended. But what I think ultimately the best way that I could recommend to go about this is trust yourself. Like if you feel, yeah. if you hear the word Brene Brown and you've never even heard of her and you feel, I'm gonna look her up, trust that. Yeah. Trust whatever you're drawn to there. I believe that we are being guided, that there is a, there is a wisdom, there is our soul, like we are attracted to what is gonna help us evolve and heal. Yeah. So start to trust, ooh, I'm getting the chills. Uh, start to start to trust that, start yeah. to trust what resonates with you and what dis, what di, what's dissonant and what's resonant. Right. And do more of what's resonant and do less of what's dissonant. You know, get yeah. curious to why, why am I, why am I going straight to this book on the shelf? What is this book? Oh, maybe I should yeah. read it. And, and trust the wisdom that is also working yeah. through you and guiding you for your highest good. Even if the rest of the world says, oh, Brene Brown's great. I mean, and, and she's great for me. I mean, you know, <laughs> in, for a lot of people. But yeah. that doesn't mean she's great for you. You know, you have to find what works for you. If you, you know, listen to yourself and go, oh, she's crazy. Then trust that. You're not there. You, you know, you, you need somebody else who's going to say it to you differently. One of my favorite books is uh, a book called The Gift of Fear from Gavin De Becker. And he, it's a completely different avenue to come from but what he talks about in there is when to trust our fear um, and fear isn't really what we're addressing today but sometimes I'm afraid to look at what I need to look at and like I said when we started you know our bodies will tell us when we're ready and we have to trust that too he's amazing you know He's, he's down my avenue of things I like to do uh, I'm a forensic psychologist by nature so uh, he, he does a lot of um, bodyguard type of work I don't know if that makes sense but you get it from different avenues it doesn't always have to be a clinician of some sort cool um, let's see if we so any other questions if you guys live want to type them in we'll see if we can address them and I'll see if there's anything else that we left out uh... what about okay so Sierra asks about um, PTSD specifically around sex mm -hmm. so is there anything you could speak to about and I know um, that's probably a big one for people is re-engaging in whatever was wherever the trauma was in the first place like right. if it's a freeway phobia or if it's sexual trauma like how do you re-engage in a healthy sexual way when you have um, triggers and PTSD during sexual interactions right yeah I think one, one thing that's important too is to identify whether or not it's truly PTSD or it's another reaction to trauma and not to say that it isn't you know trauma it just it might be something different a lot of people go right to PTSD but that isn't always the case so let's try to identify what it is um, you know there's all kinds of definitions out there about it and, and you know do some studying on your own you know find out if that's what it is it could be you know, anxiety issues can be anything but um, <sighs> Well, you know, it, it goes back to trusting yourself. Go slow. Don't think you have to be somewhere that you don't have to be. You know, we think, oh, I got to get over this or I got to get here. You don't have to. You don't have to do anything. You know, try new ways of doing, you know, intimacy. Any, anything you can that you feel comfortable with. And, and your partner who loves you, you know, they'll go along with it. it you know, it's, that's, you know, the nature of a really healthy relationship. So, uh, you know, one way to... I think, <laughs> I think that's a big, I think what you just touched on is also very, very uh, big is uh, a partner who loves you mm. would be, uh, maybe a loving relationship looks like you're able to talk about your triggers, talk about your fears and be received in a loving manner mm -hmm. and be met with um, somebody working with you around your healing process. Yeah. And that if that's not the situation that you're in, um, it might be, uh, I think some people get into um, relationships that are also re-traumatizing them. Mm -hmm. yeah. And so, um, back to trusting yourself. And, <laughs> and, I, and I think though, I mean, for the most part, I always knew, you know, it's like, I just, but I just didn't want to know. I always knew when I was in a bad religion or a bad situation, I just had to learn, I had to learn to trust myself. And it's hard to do because it's, you know, it's uncomfortable and it's not what we're taught. But, um, mm. you know, <sighs> There are a lot of different ways to handle anxiety, PTSD. You know, again, a good therapist, a good uh, MFT, EMDR is a process. 
try them out, experiment with stuff, see what works, what doesn't. But what's really, really important too, and I want to keep forgetting to get here, but um, there is no like end of the road, you know, there's no better. There's no, I'm now, un, you know, I'm not broken anymore because we're not broken, no, but none of us are broken. You're not broken, I'm not broken. You know, it may feel that way, but we're not. So it's not like I'm gonna run this race and I'm gonna get to the end of it and I'll be better. This is, you know, this is, as they say, a marathon. And our experiences will, will compound and they'll build on upon themselves. You know, what I know today, a lot of what I know today is just because I'm old, you know? <laughs> I mean, it's just living through it a couple of times. You know? It's so different than when I was younger. That's okay too, you know. And and I love listening to people who are younger than me, who probably have the same exact opinion I did at their age, and having a good conversation. You know, nobody did that with me when I was young. Mm. So I love to do that, and I, you know, I trust them that they trust themselves. But yeah, we're not. I, it feels so uncomfortable, but it's not broken. You know, if you believe, and I don't know, it depends on what you believe. But if you believe in power, universe, God. My belief is that it's that that isn't what's intended. You know, it's intended for something else. Just because it doesn't feel good, doesn't mean it's not okay. You know, it's growing pains. We, when I am going through a crap time, and you know, I have those. I actually had quite a crap year, to be honest with you. But you know, I learned through them. What do I do? How do I handle this? Do I throw a fit? You know, do I throw things against the wall? You know, I don't know. But is it working? You know, is that way of doing it working? So it's finding new ways uh, that are helpful. Reading books, talking to therapists, joining groups, you know? There are some groups out there. If you're in the San Diego area, I know of a good um, childhood abuse group. You can just get in touch with me, I'll let you know. Yeah, awesome, yeah. awesome. And I would like to, oh, I see another comment. Um, before I read that, I would like to encourage you guys to be, uh, to be open in the group. Uh, amongst commenting, leave, letting, you know, uh, reaching out. Um, I really, my vision for this group is really for us to rise up together and heal. And uh, we're probably all at different phases of our healing journey. And we all have uh, some experience with what works, what didn't work, or we're brand new, or we're, you know, way on the other side of the healing journey. So leaning on the group with commenting, giving suggestions, and also lead, when you need advice on something or help or thoughts or suggestions, like, um, I really believe that healing happens, you know, we're tribe people, that healing happens within the tribe and that if we try to do this alone, it's not going to be, we're not, I don't think that you can heal from relational traumas, which is what this is relating to people well, yeah. by yourself. And I think that, um, part of it can be done alone. Some of the crying of done alone, the books mm -hmm. and that stuff, but it's really the community I think that would help us really, uh, get the deep healing, the, you know, the healing of the heart. That well, and that's, you're saying it too, relationships. If I'm having, you know, struggles with relationships, then I, and I'm doing work with myself, I have to have relationships to know whether or not what I'm doing is working. I have to practice, I have to experiment. And you know, it's funny, I, you can tell somebody that's what you're doing. All right, I'm awkward, but I'm experimenting right now. <laughs> and you know, my therapist says, or whatever, you know. Yeah. There's no wrong answers, really. I mean, it's do it your way, find the way that works and you know, the more you are you, the more other people are going to see that and they're going to be attracted to that. Nothing more sexy than someone being themselves. Oh, right. <laughs> Let's see this comment here. Let me scroll up. Um, thank you, ladies. Love all your different strategies. Love the kindness and meditation. Oh, the loving, love the kind, love and kindness meditations. I love, I really appreciate why I was asking the questions for, which the moment, moment of. Clarity, thank you. Oh, you're welcome. I'm so glad you were able to join us today. Um, I don't know if you were talking about the meditation that I put on YouTube or if you have your own, but I have a, I'll put it in the comments after this video is wrapped up about, it's a loving kindness meditation. It's a Buddhist practice and it's about a 12 minute guided meditation with music. And it's, uh, it's, I, I, it's my voice, but I didn't make up the, the it's, it's Buddha's practice for opening the heart. And, um, I think a couple of years into my sobriety is when I got into that practice and it's really powerful for learning to love yourself and learning to love other people and uh, to radically transform your heart. And it's just one of the, one yeah. of the ways, one of the ways, but there's many different ways, but so I don't know, I don't know. Um, well, let me jump in there real quick. Okay. You said something and it triggered uh, something in my head about um, how we do resolve our issues. Uh, the other thing to be very wary of is drug and alcohol use. Um, I mean, it's fine if it's fine for you, but if you're having struggles with it, you know, find, if you can find a way to do whatever you need to do, you know, to 
to not have that issue. I don't know if that makes sense. I'm not saying don't drink, but if you if you're in a place where you can't, that you can't drink, don't drink and go to you know go to a program. Find people to help out. That's what they do. That's what we do. You know, uh, we're supportive of each other. It is a really great way to anesthetize ourselves. I, I've done it. I did it. You know, but I haven't done it in a really long time because I really wanted to find out who I was. Uh, and you know, it's been a long time. But I encourage you take a look at that behavior. Yeah. Um, amen to that. You know, to facing life on life's terms, to being with all the feelings and learning how to, learning how to what, like surf instead of, or what is it? Oh. Dance in the rain instead of like avoid the rain or being with your feelings, learning how yeah. to be with your feelings instead of numbing them out. Yeah. Um, so yeah, facing life sober. And for me, what I, um, drinking was amazing when I was 16 because it shut off all the feelings I didn't want to feel, all the trauma, all the, all the rage, all the anxiety, it shut everything off. Um, and it absolutely saved my life from the emotional uh, intensity of what it was like for me to be a teenager yeah. before I drank. Um, I, I didn't want to live. And then I drank and it was great. But then the problem is is that I really like drinking. And uh, then that, the anxiety built up, the drinking built up. And then so I found uh, I needed to get sober before I could, um, well that's the, that's the order of operations for me is I got sober and then I addressed the anxiety and then I addressed like the rage and the shame and the sadness and the grief. And then the childhood sexual abuse stuff came up. So it all came up. Um, I didn't have to dig for it so much. It came up in like each year there was a new thing that came up in my journey. Yeah. It was really like each feeling, like each year of my recovery has been like a feeling. Like at the beginning, there was a year where I was like loneliness. I, how do I be alone? And then there was there was rage. I was like, I am angry. And I know it's not your fault. I know you, you kind of triggered me. Uh, I'm triggered from you. But, but there was like a disproportionate amount of anger. Mm -hmm. You know, I knew that there was something in me that was really angry. And so what I love about the, commu the community that I had to jump in here, the recovery community is you can say that to somebody. I'm really just angry right now and it's not you. Just know I'm be angry for a little while just because of issues. You know, people love when you're honest with them. Just be honest. Yeah. Sorry to be interrupted. Yeah, no, no. Go, great. Um, so I think that is all of the questions that did. Was there anything else? Let me just scan. Let's see my notes. Uh, Oh, um, Sierra had asked about body disorders and abuse, and I think the question was around um, the link between them and then how to heal. Okay. Um, bo uh, like body dysmorphia, I, I'm, I'm, that's what I'm hearing. But how you, you're affect it's affecting you in your daily life with food, uh, maybe some bulimia, is that? Maybe, hey Sierra, I think I see you on there. If you're there, do you want to clarify, is it have to do with body dysmorphia or uh, eating disorder or um, how, um, if you wanted to get, clarify. How's it expressing, yeah, how's it expressing itself? What is it that is specifically, throw it out there. Yeah, um, maybe she's not there. Oh, well, you know, I'll do the best I can. Okay. <sighs> well, it's funny, I was just looking, no, that's not funny, but I was just looking at my notes and I wanna make sure I get in here that, you know, we get what we need when we need it and we get what we get when we can handle it. You know, this is again about finding what's going on and trying to address that as well. It can all be from, you know, the abuse, but it isn't necessarily always that. Usually, you know, things are intertwined, what have you, but that doesn't mean that if I resolve this issue that my other issues are going to resolve. You know, they're, sometimes they're exclusive, they're, you know, they have, to, they have to be dealt with on their own. Uh, body images, it's difficult. I mean. I don't know many people, women, not many women around my, my tribe that don't struggle with that to some extent. So, you know, again, reading books, finding a therapist, you know, identifying what your problem is and what it is you're trying to get to. Old ideas about, you know, how to be thin or how, how to be pretty or how to be all those things, that'll keep you going and you have to re-identify what works for you. It's a tough one though. I mean, I'm, it's, a, it's a five second answer to a very difficult question that takes a long time, but uh, you know, it's, it's a beginning. So I have a lot of experience with trauma and a lot of different, you know, recovery and stuff, but one of them isn't body dysmorphia or food disorders. I have other addictions that I've addressed, but I don't have direct experience with that. But so from someone who doesn't directly get it, I have a very ignorant thought to add. Okay, please. Um, how does it relate to self-love? 
it's self, question? It's self-control, at least you know, okay. my experience with it. And you know, please, if you have different experiences, let me know. But my experience and you know, education and personal experience is it's about control. I love when people like me. I mean, that's fun, right? You know, <laughs> and I love when people think I'm pretty. You know, there's a, there's a way that I lived my life for years, you know, getting people to look at me because of certain things. And when they don't do that anymore, or if it changes, then I want it to get back. Also, my partners, my friends, usually I can take a look at who I'm spending my time with and what I'm doing and really get an idea of, okay, this, this is affecting that or this is, or it's not affecting this. Um, and I want control, 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 control. I want to control what's in my body. I want to control what goes out of my body. I want to control not eating. I want to eat, you know, this much, this much food here and then not for the rest of the day. Or, you know, a lot of OCD issues come with that too, you know, the, doing our process. You know, again, it, it's a very, very, I don't know, it's not difficult. I don't want to say difficult. It's a very personal journey, you know, because that's you, you know, you're, this is how you're coping and that's okay, you know, it's okay. If it's not working for you anymore, then we'll find something else. Is there 12 step groups for? Absolutely, if uh, there's the Overeaters Anonymous OA, um, but you know, it, it doesn't just have to beat that either though. Okay. I mean, any 12 step program in my opinion, uh, usually is pretty good. It's, I mean, if you, eating and, and alcohol, similar-ish, you know, if you will. Okay. The feelings are the same. The, and you, you, if you know, if you and I talked about this, you know, we would have the same exact feelings. Uh, if we, you and I talked about this, we'd have the same feelings because it's you know, it's about what we're trying to control. And and is the root of that trying to control not feeling? I don't want to feel certain things like you the know, shame stuff. Yeah, I mean, I gotta tell you that I think that's the crux of most of it. I don't really like feelings; they're sometimes <laughs> no fun. I want to be happy, you know. That's that's the one I keep thinking I want happy, but happy I don't for me it's not realistic and I don't mean that I can't feel good it's just happy is just this ubiquitous term and it, it, it's different for each person yeah you know, neutrality comfortability you know security those are the things I want to get to and when I can look at the world with a neutral you know point of view I feel really good hmm. I don't have to change you I don't change me you know yeah the, the world doesn't have to change you know and we'll let people be who they are that's a tough one. Sounds like love and acceptance. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Those are fun ones. Cool. Okay. Um, well, why don't, um, thank you so much yeah. for, for coming on today and doing this interview. I have, I have loved this and I, I, it's been a joy to talk with you. Yeah. So much fun, you guys. So much fun. <laughs> and thank you for tuning in. And again, share this video with any friends that you think might relate. Add them to the group and join, have them join the tribe. We would love this. This is for everybody who uh, either has suffered from childhood sexual abuse, a sexual abuse as adult, or people who love and support us on our healing process. And I plan to do more interviews. Um, so definitely want to get uh, hear your feedback of what you thought about this interview, what, what was help, what, what else you would want to know, any more questions that you have, any other topics you would like us to, to, co to cover or people that you would like us to bring on to interview. Um, also, how can we get a hold of you? <clears throat> you can email me, K-A-R-I-N dot T-H-E-B-U-S at gmail.com. Uh, my phone number is, well, you know what, email me first. Let's go, let's start there. Email is a good way. I like email because it, you know, we, we can get to know each other a bit before we actually have a conversation, and then we can have a conversation. Um, I don't have a, uh, I don't have a Facebook page, and I don't have a website. You know, I, I just, right now, it's not where I want to go. I want to be individual, and I want people who want, you know, what I can help them with to come to me. And most of it's been word of mouth, or it's been referrals. And, you know, I'm happy with that, because yeah. you know, that means that some, you got to have a stake in the game. You have to have buy-in, and then they have buy-in. And so yeah. then we have a great relationship, and we can do whatever we want to do. It's awesome. So I believe it's below the video too. If it's not already below the video, I'll put it below the video if you want. If you resonate with Karen's message and you want uh, to reach out with her, please be welcome to reach out to her, reach out to me. Mm -hmm. I hope you're having a beautiful day and we'll see you again in another interview. All right. Thanks guys, Bye. it was so fun. <laughs>